When we first moved to Australia, we really wanted to live the outdoor lifestyle. And to do that, we need an appropriate car. So I bought a Chinese U. Cue all the comments about why I bought such a cheap car. G'day guys, my name's Ross and I moved with my family to Australia during a global pandemic. I know what you're thinking, why did he buy such a cheap car? Why didn't he buy a Ranger or a Hilux or a Triton? Well, the answer is I've just had another kid. and I can't really afford it. So if like me, you want to live the outdoor lifestyle, but you're on a budget, then have a look at my new car that I bought secondhand at a year old for about $39,000. Should we take a look inside? This is a GWM Ute and it's the Canon X version. Ugh. So this is it inside. So the vehicle I bought was the Canon X, which at the time was the top of the range one. They now have a Vanta, which is exactly the same. It's just got black bits where there should be chrome. And I can tell you now, there's a lot of chrome in this vehicle. All on the inside, it's got this soft leather, fancy buttons and knobs. The thing basically drives itself. For the money, all of the features on this car are pretty high end. And when I was looking at cars for the same kind of price, I was looking at probably a four or five year old Triton that would be mid-spec. Bloody hell, it's getting hot in here. Now obviously buying this thing second hand, the previous owner had done a few upgrades. I've got some extra lights. I told you there was a lot of chrome. I've got one of these. My wife thought it was a ball bar, but it's just a nudge bar. And a bit of a bash plate underneath as well. This is the bit where if you get the new updated one, the Vanta, it comes with black bits rather than chrome but wouldn't that make it more hot? It just gets hot in Australia anyway, so I don't think that's gonna do much. Let's have a look at the kiddies bit in the inside. Full of kids seats, but still with this fancy soft touch leather. The one thing I didn't get yet was all-terrain tires. So I don't even know what these are. They could look kind of roady. They should be all right for the kind of four-wheel driving I'll do at the beginning. They should be knee changing soon, so I'll get me some AT tires soon enough. More upgrades. Got a tow bar. So I can tow a caravan. I haven't got a caravan. Maybe I need to get a caravan for a camper trailer. It's got all the plugs for it as well. And apparently this one is for a reversing camera on your caravan, which I don't have. And I don't have the screen for it either. There's lots of these little cameras everywhere. And that gives me a full 360 view when I want to try and reverse this thing because it's pretty big. And I've never driven anything this big and I'm worried about crashing it into stuff especially when reversing. That's why I need the nudge bar. I will have to upgrade the tonneau. For those of you that if you're watching this from any other country than Australia and you're wondering, why don't people just steal all the stuff in the back when that's all you've got to do to open it? And the answer is, well, in Australia, people don't steal stuff as much. Most people are pretty upstanding gentlemen and women and people. It's 2023 after all. It's got a little step. I don't have to get up like a peasant, even though I am a peasant because I bought a cheap car with a seven year warranty and five years roadside assist. So if it does break down, then someone's gonna pick me up and fix it for me. I'll let you know how many times it breaks down in seven years. Oh, that step's handy. Complete with Chinese writing to tell you how to use it. Just don't step on that bit. So I need to upgrade the canopy on that soon enough. I've never used a vehicle with side steps before. It's got all the usual features like Android Play, or Apple Play, depending on which phone you use. This one has wireless charging, automatic seats, they're even heated, and I'm gonna really need that in this lovely Queensland weather. Nice fake air intakes. Makes it look a little bit like a poor man's Ranger. That grill has got so much chrome. It's got some roof rails, more chrome. It's got all the front cameras and stuff. It just means it's gonna be really expensive if I ever have to replace the windscreen. Now, if you're wondering about the four wheel drive status of this, apparently it does have a rear diff lock. Like, I know what a rear diff lock is yet, but it's like back here somewhere. And it's got four wheel drive low, so if I get stuck in any really serious situations, apparently I should be able to get out. Or I'll just buy some of those recovery boards and things like that to help. Do I need to tow myself out? How do you tow yourself out? So we mainly bought this thing for camping and going a bit off-roady. This is probably about as much off-roading as I've ever done. And it's just gonna be really a bigger family car. I never had anything this big in the UK before. God knows how much it would have cost. But in Queensland, everyone's got these things. Well, maybe not these things, because, you know, it's cheap. I'm gonna really regret being a tight ass, aren't I? More chrome, more chrome. Oh, it locks as well, by the way. And then they like fold in. And then you just open it, like that. Keyless, or like me, clueless. I don't think I'm gonna be going up any kind of goat tracks with it. 
I don't think I'm going to be going through any rivers. When people have four-wheel drives, how much four-wheel driving do they actually really do? Like an armchair four-wheel driver. What upgrades do I actually need to get if I'm wanting to four-wheel drive? What do I need as a basics to go four-wheel driving? Other than, you know, a car that has four-wheel drive in it. Windscreen wipers. If you can see that, that's a cable for the camera, which I don't have yet. These back seats as well, they do like a 60-40 split thing. You can lift them up and get even more space, but I can't do that because I've got kid seats in there and they don't move anymore. So when I don't have kids anymore, then I can show you how I can put more space in there. But at the moment, the kids take up all the space that I have. That's why I've got the big tub in the back. Do any of you have a GWM Ute? Are they any good? Do they break? I don't want them to break, please. I'd love to have some positive comments. Have I made a mistake? Will I be regretting myself later on? I guess only time will tell. That was my choice. What do I get? A slightly older, potentially more reliable, better branded vehicle with more than 100Ks on it, or this? With all the toys that might break, but we'll see, for about the same price, with nearly six years worth of warranty left on it, and the best part of four years worth of roadside assist. What would you have bought? I know lots of people are buying these now, and like most things, when you see one, you see loads. Tell me what you think I should have bought in the comments, because I know you want to. And let this whinging pom whinge about how you're having a go at me. And if you want to see another video about how it's actually going using this thing, well, watch this one here. See you next time.